Hello, I'm author John A. Douglas, and I'm the author of The Age of Adventures, the stories and books that are told in the setting that is my fantasy world, Allspire. Allspire is a fantasy world filled with epic magic, tons of adventure, political intrigue, but before we get started telling those stories and before you end up going into the other videos that follow this one to find out the lore and the history, the magic system, everything that makes Allspire what it is, I'm going to take a few minutes to explain some of the storytelling limits that I've placed on myself for this world. I've been writing a long time and reading for even longer and I have a sense of what I like and what I don't like when it comes to storytelling. To that extent I'm going to be placing some hard limits on the storytelling and I want to let you know what those are so that you kind of have a bit of expectation of what you'll see or rather what you won't see going into any Age of Adventures books. So let's get started. Five hardline rules that I have for the world of Allspire in the Age of Adventures. Rule number one, no prequels. I don't particularly care for prequels at this point in my life. And while that's no shade on any author who's written prequels or or friends of mine who have done prequels for their uh, books. If you feel that there's something to be told in going back in time, then by all means do it and I will probably enjoy it as well. But I've come to a place where I don't really care for them myself. As a fan of a lot of science fiction and fantasy, when movies or TV shows and books, nothing frustrates me more than the narrative taking a stop after several entries and going back in time to tell stories that we often already know the outcome of. The Age of Adventures has two entry points, The Black Crown and The Lionheart. These novels happen concurrently, right next to each other in parallel, so that while they're both happening relatively at the same time, they're on different ends of the continent of Evergrad, and so they don't really affect each other, and you are not necessarily need to read one to understand the other. It can provide extra context for some story elements, but each one's being told as if it's the first one. And while I hope you'll enjoy every entry in this, it's not necessary to read one to enjoy the other. And I'm going to keep it that way. I may end up telling stories that are in one place or another in the timeline, but these will all happen after the two novels starting points. Nothing before that. You may end up hearing uh, events that are alluded to like the orc wars or the rock brow rebellion or the war of sorrows one of the most famous battles that ever happened in all spires history but i'm not going to go back in time and detail what happened to those what happened to lead up to those events is not as important as the conclusion because their conclusions are ultimately feeding the narrative of what's going on now if i do go and tell a story that kind of goes back in time from the narrative they will Will not go past the starting point which is the prologue of the black crown it takes place 17 years prior to the start of the lionheart and the black crown and that prologue is set after the final battle of the orc wars no other story will go any farther backwards than that number two no time travel i really like a good time travel story but I feel like sometimes they end up getting used to cheapen some elements of storytelling or undo a bad story decision and in some cases uh, hack storytellers will uh, use it to erase a dramatic moment that they used for shock value. I'm not about that. I believe that uh, what happens happens and you should keep moving forward. So you're not going to see any characters from the future dropping in to try and prevent some catastrophe down the line. And you're not going to see the other characters trying to pull it back to the future and go back and, and fix things and try to uh, alter timelines we're not going to get any of that in the books and there may be some magic that alters time and space and can play with uh play with them in a little bit but nothing is going to reverse time and or speed time forward i really uh, feel strongly about this i don't think i could add anything with a time travel story anyway number three 
no multiverse. I feel like at this point, we've gotten about as many multiverse stories as we can possibly handle. I do like a really good what if story, but I really don't want the existence of fractured timelines and different universes and uh, dimensions crossing over to each other. Once upon a time, it was a very useful and, and fun tool to you know, show what characters could look like given if circumstances had gone differently. But these days, it kind of cheapens the existence of your actual primary characters. And it's also used as a cheap tool by other story writers to write stories where, frankly, nothing has consequence. I don't care for it as much as I used to. And even though I did have one or two multiverse stories I wouldn't have mind telling in the Age of Avengers, I don't think it's worth it. And I'm not going to implement it. Number four, death is permanent. I don't think that a character's death should be used for cheap shock value or for trying to tug at the audience's emotions. I feel like if a character is going to die, it's going to be something that's significant to the narrative. I feel very strongly about this. There's nothing that takes away the sting of a character's important death than cheating it with time travel or multiverses or cloning or something you know that pulls some kind of element out of their back end just to try and, and cheapen their actual death. So on Allspire, while there is a little bit of fudging with death in regards to necromantic magic, there is no way to resurrect somebody once they're gone. And there is no way to pull their spirit into some kind of object or anything like that. As I'll detail in the magic rule in just a second, once somebody's gone, they're gone. And they're not going to come back. I respect my audience too much than to play with their emotions in such a cheap and ineffectual way. Number five, the magic system has hard limits. I'll detail the magic in the magic system video in a little bit, but until then, just know that the magic system, just know that the magic in Allspire does have some element reasons why it can't work in some ways. One of the biggest rules of this is wizards cannot fly. This has to do with the fact that the magic that comprises a person's life force, their spark of life, is a, ma a flint of magic in and of itself. And it doesn't interact well with magic being cast in other ways. So wizards who have tried to attempt using magic to fly in the past is usually not only not work, but it's also ultimately very violently lethal. Altering a person's physical self is also something that's not really capable of being done with the magic because again they run up against that shard of magic that comprises a person's magic force that means so there's nothing like polymorph or changing your physical uh, appearance permanently there's a lot of trickery and workaroundism that can be done but in the end i didn't want my magic users to be so overpowered that they were basically all Dr. Manhattan floating around. It kind of makes magic use feel like a cheap workaround for a lot of story elements. And ultimately, it makes it less interesting to me when somebody can just use magic to do everything. Magic has its uses on Allspire, and it's very powerful and very potent in some cases, but it's not a catch-all that can cure anything and everything. Uh, another thing to note is that there's no like healing items, and healing is a very, very rare magical ability in there. So uh, don't think that just because somebody got run through that a healer can just run up and use a little magic and make them okay again. So that is all the five hard rules that I have for Allspire. I'm going to be following this video up with more videos on the lore, the characters, and everything that involves Allspire, whether it is in the Black Crown, the Lionheart, or whatever novels may follow this. Stay tuned for more, and until next time, hail the Black Crown.